Mark, there's something on my mind and it's not easy for me to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. What is it? I think that you should find yourself a new job. I mean, you only work like two times a week. In your free time, you play video games at home or go out with your friends. Don't you want a full-time job? I don't. I already live in a nice house and I'm happy with my life. I don't think there's any need for me to change anything. But I'm the one paying for it all. Don't you think that's a little unfair? If I were in your position, I'd feel bad that I wasn't making enough money. And also insecure about my future. What the hell? Are you saying that I'm a loser because I don't have a full-time job like you? I'm not. I just think that you should think about your future. You can't rely on me forever. I mean, you're still young. Don't you want to do something meaningful with your life? Don't you get sick of playing games and going out with the same group of friends all the time? Whatever, you don't need to lecture me. I should have never married an older woman had I known that she would start lecturing me like this. What do you mean by that? I wish I'd married someone that was younger than me. I mean, they're prettier and more loyal. I married you because I have a stable job and income, that's all. I thought that if I was getting married, it would be better to marry someone like you, someone that could take care of me for the rest of my life. But I guess that I was wrong. You're already thinking about your post-retirement years? Sort of. The one good thing I got out of this marriage is that you bought us a room in this high-rise condo. And the mortgage payments aren't that high, are they? I didn't buy this place. I pay a pretty high rent for us to live here. But I'm sure that is not a burden for you, seeing that you make good money. If we're being honest with each other today, I think that my love for you is gone. I don't have any feelings for you anymore. What do you mean by that? I'm sick and tired of you telling me what to do all the time. You might be five years older than me, but that doesn't make me your child. I'm your husband. You should treat me with more respect. I'm not being bossy because I'm older than you. I'm just asking you to do the right thing for the both of us. It doesn't make sense that I'm doing all the work here. You can think whatever you want, but don't share your thoughts with me. It's really irritating. I had no idea this bothered you so much. Fine, I won't say what's on my mind anymore. But please do some self-reflection on your own then. Mark? What do you want now? Stop nagging me, I've had enough of your complaining. I know that you brought over a woman to our apartment while I was at work. How the hell did you find out? I don't care that you found out though, I'm going to see whoever I like whenever I want to. Well, I won't allow you to bring them over to my apartment. And I can't believe you let her use our bed. What were you thinking? Fine, then do you want to get a divorce? What? And I'm taking this house. You can go find yourself a new place to live. Do you hear yourself? Do you know how selfish you're being right now? We're renting this place under my name. Why should I be the one to move out? And we're still married. I have every right to complain about you bringing women over to our place. Don't you understand that you're committing adultery? I don't care what you think of me. I'm no longer in love with you and this is my life. I'm going to do as I please. I'm sick and tired of listening to you complain all the time. I've had enough. I want you to move out. So this means that you want to file for a divorce. Yes, that's right. I don't see any benefits in staying married to you anymore. It stresses me out to be with you. It's not good for my health. I want you to move out as soon as possible. Are you sure this is a good idea? Isn't it better for you to move out? I don't think so. I like living here. I don't think that you'll be able to afford the rent. Do you even know how much you make right now? I may not make as much as you, but I'll be able to pay the rent. It's not a problem. I don't think you understand how much the rent is. Do you think that I'm stupid? I think that we have the divorce papers at home. Yes, we do. 
I'll follow them soon then. What the hell? We haven't even finished talking about this. How can you be so selfish? You only make $800 a month. How are you going to get by? The rent is not that high, so I can manage. I don't spend that much anyway. I'm going to get back on my feet after we get divorced. I'm going to remarry a cute and young girl who takes better care of me. Life is not that easy, you know. You're not going to miraculously find a great job when you want to. I didn't think you were such a low life. What did you just call me? I said that you're a good-for-nothing lowlife. I think we've done enough talking. You can file those divorce papers. I'll file them as soon as possible. I'm so glad to have you out of my life. Likewise. But I know that you won't be able to keep up with the rent. I can't wait to say I told you so to your face. You're sure of your decision to continue living here, right? You won't regret it later? Yes, I'm sure. How many times do you have to ask me that? I love living here. You should change the name of the lease from yours to mine. Will do. I wish you had appreciated me more, though. I did so much for you. I'm the one that's been supporting you financially ever since you quit your full-time job. Well, as my wife, that was your obligation. It's nothing to brag about. All you did was pay the rent, and it's not even that much. It's like a hundred bucks a month, right? I'll pay the rent from now on, so move out as soon as you can. I don't want to see your face anymore. Okay then, I'm moving out. Great! I just can't believe you're so stupid, though. Your punishment is coming your way soon. I've warned you. And I'm going to live my life happily without you. Why do you keep on acting like I'm not going to be able to pay the rent? I'm not going to get punished for anything. Well, if that's how you like to see things, fine by me. If I need anything more from you, I'll contact you through my lawyer. Sounds great. I'm so happy that I don't have to live with you anymore. Same here. Bye, asshole. <coughs> Yo, pick up your phone! I'm at work, and we agreed to not speak to one another, remember? Text me instead. I did everything that you asked me to. What else do you want from me? First of all, why did you take all the electrical appliances from my house? I called you last week about it, but you wouldn't pick up your phone. I bought all those appliances, so I have every right to take them. It took me a while to move into my new place, but now that I have, I needed my appliances back. Fine, I guess I can't complain about it, but you could have given me some warning. Now I have to go buy some appliances for myself. I suppose, but why are you telling me all this? I'm sure that your new girlfriend can help you with the shopping. Actually, there's a bigger problem. The rent is much higher than I expected it to be. There must be some sort of mistake. Oh, so you finally got your bill. You should have read the contract when we changed the name in the agreement to yours. Yeah, I guess. But this has nothing to do with me, so you need to figure it out on your own. I've been paying the rent up until now, and you never cared how much the rent was. It's not a hundred bucks, you idiot. More like ten grand. This is all your fault. You need to take responsibility for your actions. So there's no mistake in the bill. The rent is ten grand. Yes, the rent is ten grand. You deceived me! The monthly rent is worth my annual salary amount. There's no way that I'll be able to pay this much. I'm sure that it is a stretch for you. Good luck! Is that all you have to say to me, good luck? Are you having fun seeing me struggle like this? You knew that the rent was too high for me. Why didn't you say anything? I thought that the rent was like a hundred bucks! How could you assume that the rent was so cheap? You live in a nice place, it can't be that cheap. Don't you have any common sense? Well, I saw that you paid a lot of money when we first rented this place out. And I also contributed all the savings that I had at the time. That's why I thought that the monthly rent wouldn't be so high, because we had already paid the majority at the beginning. Well, that's not the case. It was money that needed to be paid to secure the room because it's so popular. And we also used the money to buy furniture. 
But what kind of an idiot are you to think that we could live here for so cheap? Your stupidity makes me laugh. You're a real joke. Stop being so condescending! And this isn't funny at all. I can't afford to pay my rent. Then why don't you ask your girlfriend to help out with the rent? I mean, she's living with you. That's the least she could do. I can't ask my girlfriend to pay the rent. She looks up to me. She's ten years younger than me. It was stupid of her to choose to date you. I guess all you can do now is look for a decent job that pays well. Sir, so you're not even going to offer to help me out. I'm not going to be able to find a new job in such a short span of time. Well, if you can't come up with the rent, you're going to have to move out. The superintendent is going to ask you to pay the rent for the month that you've been living there. But if I can't pay, I'm sure that'll come to you next. I mean, the lease used to be under your name, so... But we're divorced now. I don't have an obligation to help you out. Your parents are the guarantor, so I'm sure that the superintendent will get in touch with them if you don't pay the rent. I didn't know that. How did I not know this? So, you can't get away with not paying your rent. Your parents are going to be so pissed off with you when they find out about this. If your parents get mad at you over this, you won't have a place to live. Why are you even calling me about this? I thought that you never wanted to speak to me again. I had no idea that this place was so expensive. You should have warned me about this. This is all your fault. You should take responsibility by paying the rent. Why would I ever do that? I'm no longer a part of your life. Deal with it on your own, you scum. Did you just call me scum? I did, because you are scum. You only married me for my money. And then you quit your job and spent your time doing whatever you wanted. You made me do all the household chores and wasted my money on games and gambling. And on top of that, you found yourself a lover and had an affair. After that, you made me move out and tried to take my house from me. I don't deserve any of the crap you put me through. Now, you need to deal with this mess on your own. I'm no longer a part of your life. Look, you have a point and I'm sorry for the way that I treated you. I didn't mean for things to end like this between us. Can't you help me out for all time's sake? I mean, we used to be married. The past is the past. It means nothing to me. We're strangers now. Please don't say that. I'm sorry for cheating on you. I see how bad that was now. You still have feelings for me, right? Please don't leave me to suffer like this. Feelings? Are you crazy? I don't feel anything for you anymore after the hell you put me through. You're the one that kicked me out. I suffered plenty. Now, it's your turn. I'm living in a fabulous new place now, and I have no intention of moving back in with you. My rent is pretty expensive, so I don't have the luxury to help you out with your rent. Can I move in with you then? No way. Can we give it another try, please? I realized how much I love you after you moved out. I'm really sorry. I won't do anything else to hurt you. I'd rather die than get back with you. I'm serious. I know that we can make it work. I hate you for what you did to me, and you're a loser who just wants to live with me for my money. I don't need you in my life. Now, can you please stop texting me? Good luck with your rent. If you can't pay the rent, I guess you'll need to borrow the money from somewhere. Although it's none of my concern now. Stop bothering me. I'm busy. In the end, Mark was not able to pay his rent. He suggested to his girlfriend that they escape during the night, but they were caught by the police the following morning. He had to beg his parents to help him pay the rent. He was then kicked out of his apartment and had no choice but to live on the streets until his parents forced him to live with them. As a result, his young girlfriend left him. He still owes his parents the rent they lent him, so he's desperately looking for a new job. He no longer has the freedom to do whatever he wants to do. He spends his time regretting the poor decisions that he had made that led him to this current situation. As for Melanie, after divorcing Mark, she lives a happy and fulfilling life. She even found herself a beautiful new boyfriend and continues to work hard at her company. She loves her new life without Mark. 
she made the right choice in divorcing Mark. Hey, Zoe. Do you know who my fiancé is? Um, why would I know? Because you haven't contacted me for years. Whatever. Anyways, answer my question. Do you know who my fiancé is? I do not, and I don't care. I was going to tell you anyways, but my husband is the CEO of a big company. Oh, that's cool. Have you seen commercials for that company? I can't believe that I'm going to marry the CEO of that company. Doesn't it only air on local channels, though? Are you jealous or something? You probably are because you're still single in your 30s, and all you do is work at a factory every day. Wow, did you contact me because you wanted to brag about this? It's embarrassing, so you should stop doing that, you know. Why would I listen to a loser like you? I have an idea. Why don't you get your life together or something? You're already in your 30s! Shut up! Oh my god, can you go talk to someone else? Sure! I have a lot of friends unlike you because I'm not the kind of person who just goes to work and comes home. You don't even know what I do for a living, do you? Don't care! Speaking of working, I quit my job after I dated him, so I'm a stay-at-home wife. I feel like I've won in life because it's every woman's dream to be one! Are you done? I'm already pissed off with prices getting higher, so I don't really give a fuck who you marry or whatever you need to say to me, okay? Bye. You know what? This is why you're still a loser and single. I'm so glad I'm not one of those narrow-minded people who think the only value in life is getting married. I'm just living my life and my number one goal is not to be a bitch who brags about her fiancé to everyone. Two weeks later. I am done with you, Zoe. What do you mean? You don't need to send money to me anymore, and don't come home, okay? Why? Um, did I say something confusing? Yes, because I'm so confused right now. I don't want anything to do with you because you've done something for me? I don't think so. You're exactly like Claire. Wow. Should I tell you the difference between you and Claire? You have no common sense, and you talk too much shit. Claire, on the other hand, is feminine, elegant, and even found a great person to marry. I'm so proud of her. Looks matter, doesn't it? But wasn't I sending you 1.5 grand every month, unlike Claire? Don't you think that I'm more respectful than her? Seriously? It's just $1,500. You're happy with that? Um... Yes, and I think that I'm something to be able to send you money every month. Your dad sends me three grand, by the way. He was rich, that's why. I'm really surprised that you used all of his inheritance. How can you spend all of it? What the hell did you buy? You know what? I'm wasting my time talking to you, so don't ever contact me again, okay? Clara is going to marry into a rich family, so I don't need you in my life anymore. Okay, then I won't send you any more money. Sure. No problem. Don't come crying to me later on, okay? I don't think Claire will help you, though. What? Who is this? Sorry, but I don't know you. Are you serious? This is so kindergarten. I don't know who this is, so I'm going to block you. Thank you, I appreciate it. A month later. Why are you calling me? I thought you didn't know me. Zoe? I want to be a family again, so can you please send me money again? And can it be two grand instead of a 1500? Are you serious? Why? I'm letting you be part of a family again. What were you thinking when I was sending you money before? Did you think I was some kind of freak that wanted to help you? I helped you because you're my one and only mother. But since you decided to tell me that you don't need me anymore, I guess I'm a stranger to you. So that means you're not going to help me. Exactly! What the hell? I can't believe this! I'm your mother! Who will listen to a bitch like you? Excuse me! Watch your mouth! Why do you want me to send you money again now anyways? Let me guess, is it Claire? I told you she won't help you. Isn't it common for kids to send parents money? 
Also, she doesn't come home and hasn't introduced me to her fiancé yet. Oh, that really sucks. I guess she didn't love you like I do. Yeah, so can you send me money again? I need help because I can't pay the rent. Sorry, but I can't do that. Even for a CEO, sending you 1.5 grand every month is pretty hard. Wait, what? CEO? Yeah, I'm the CEO of a small-scaled factory in town. No one knew about this because no one cared. Did you think a normal worker could send you that much? Hey, if you're telling the truth, you will be able to send me money again, right? Are you serious? Do you think I'm going to do that after all of this? Absolutely not. Why don't you go work or beg Claire? Claire won't send it to me. Plus, she asked me to pay for half of the wedding. What? She said that I need to help her because I'm her mother. The wedding is going to be big, so it's going to cost a hundred grand in total. Wow, I don't know what to say, but I'm so embarrassed to be part of this family. So, are you going to pay? There is no way I can pay fifty grand. When I said that, she told me that if I don't, she'll cut ties with me. I'm not surprised. Oh, I think that's the cost you need to pay them, because you're going to live with them, right? Well, it doesn't matter to me, though. I thought you would be happy to be part of the family again. Are you just going to leave me to die? Just wondering, why are you tough to me but not to Claire? Can't believe you changed attitudes with me and her. Actually, you know what? We are strangers, so you don't need to answer that. Wait! A few weeks later. Is it true that you testified to the police about my fiancé's company? I just answered what I knew. Isn't it a terrible thing to advertise false info of parts and selling that? He wanted to hide about this, but since I knew about it, I confessed it for him. Why do you have all the details? I'm the CEO of a small-scaled factory in town, so I know everything about your husband's company. I knew there was something about him because his commercials were wrong on so many levels. He's even hated by everyone in the industry, and I think it's a matter of time before he fades away. What? CEO? Stop joking around. Hey, I can't marry him because of you! How can you do this to me? Why does everyone in this family blame me? Isn't your fiancé the bad guy? He's lucky that this was discovered before any accidents happened. The cost of collection is tens of billions of dollars, right? That really sucks for both of you. You ruined our lives! It's not my fault, you know. Oh, about Mom, she's crying that she has no money and how you won't help her. Tell her I'm not going to because I'm I need to pay for the wedding fee, and if he gets arrested, there's no way I can pay for the rent. What should I do? Hmm. Don't know and don't care. Your life will be hell from now on, so good luck with that. An hour later. Zoe? Is everything true? Claire's marriage is ruined? Yeah, so? Since Claire really hates you right now, why don't you come back? What? I'm asking you to come back. Claire will never forgive you, but I will always be on your side, I promise. What the hell is wrong with you? Hell no, you are so creepy, so I'm gonna block you. Wait, hold on. Please help me. I can't pay the rent, so I might get kicked out. Can't you at least let me borrow rent money? What? Who is this? Sorry, but I don't know you. After the incident, my mom was kicked out of the house because she couldn't pay rent. Looks like she went on a shopping spree and spent a lot before Claire got married because she thought she'd be rich. Of course, she couldn't pay the bill, so she got into debt, and since she has no job and no house, I wonder how she's paying for it. Claire needs to pay for the wedding cancellation fee, but she has no money, so she's also in debt now. I don't know where Claire is right now, but there is a possibility that she's with someone fishy again. Since Claire's former fiancé's company went bankrupt, a lot of places began to ask us for parts, and I plan on being careful and not selling defective parts. Hey, Faith! Can you take care of the old hag? Hi, Georgia. Who are you talking about? The old hag that's living with me. She's a waste of space, so I want to kick her out. Are you talking about mother-in-law? Yes. 
Isn't that rude to say she's your mom? And? Mikey's the firstborn, so he's responsible for her. First of all, aren't you living in your parents' house? I don't think it's yours. It is now. We changed the owner's name to my husband. Aren't you rude for making it your house? You guys moved in last year right after your dad passed, even though your mom lived there. Rude? I've been taking care of her all this time. I appreciate that, but don't make us take care of her because our apartment is small. Plus, we have kids and are busy with work. She could still do everything on her own, so it should be fine. Also, I think she belongs to the poor life you guys are living. <laughs> you just want your dad's inheritance, right? What are you talking about? I heard from Mike that you started to live together because you wanted his inheritance. No. I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. I did take care of dad until he passed. But I don't need mom anymore because she doesn't even talk to us lately. Don't you know that we run a pizza shop and are busy? Also, of course she won't talk. Her husband passed. And all you two talk about is money. I don't think she feels anything because she's forgetful lately. Anyways, we can't take care of her, so look after her, okay? She is not a pet. She's her own mother. Why don't you talk about this with her first? About what? Her coming here? I don't have time to talk to her because I'm going to kick her out today. So if you don't want to help her, she will be out on the streets. Doesn't matter to me, though. It matters to me because she's Mike's mom and my mother-in-law. Okay, you know what? Fine, I will take care of her. Why didn't you say that earlier? Sorry for making you busier, but you should have time because I'm pretty sure that your crap pizza shop will close down soon. We're doing our best, so please don't say that. Anyways, when I get the inheritance, my husband and I will just relax at our house and do nothing. I didn't want mom to use any, so thank you for taking care of her. Wow, you are a piece of shit. You know what? I want to cut ties with you. Is that okay? Yes. Such a waste of time talking to a poor person like you. So bye. Okay then. Bye. <laughs> I just turned on the TV. But what the hell is this? Who is this? Why is your pizza shop on TV? What do you want? I'm busy now, so... What's with the attitude? I'm your sister-in-law! We're strangers. Let me guess, you contacted me because you can't reach your mom and Mike, right? Exactly! I can't believe them! Anyways, can you explain to me about this? About what? Why is your crappy pizza shop popular now? I thought it closed down. What the hell? You saw our interview, right? Well, there's your answer. Your mom helped us think about new toppings for our pizza and that buzzed on social media. What? Your mom's friend helped us also. I bet mom didn't say anything because she's slow in the head. Looks like she was just acting. She did her best to not talk to you and express her feelings so that you'll think that she became slow in the head. Wait. So, she was okay all this time? Yes, she was totally fine. Are you serious? I can't believe this! I can't believe you actually... You were treating your mom like crap and kicked her out a year ago and made us take care of her. I didn't expect for your pizza shop to be this popular in a year. Something terrible actually happened to me. My dad didn't leave us any inheritance. Oh, really? 
He had a lot of debt and we are responsible for it now. There is no way I can pay it off. And that is when I saw you guys on TV. Okay, and? Aren't you surprised? I knew everything, so I'm not. Why do you know about this? In fact, if you knew, why didn't you tell me? We couldn't waive our rights of inheritance because it was too late. Your mom told us everything and said to leave everything to you. Oh, and just to let you know, since our shop is doing well, we're constructing two family houses now. Our life is good, thanks to you. Are you serious? We are in debt right now and you guys are living a good life? That's not fair! Are you jealous? Shut up and give me my mom back! I just talked to your mom and she wants to cut ties with you too. Seriously? Yes, good luck paying off the debt. Wait, can't you help me a little bit? Your shop is doing well, right? You were talking shit about us the whole time and decided to ask us for help when you're in trouble? The answer's no. This is all your fault, so deal with it by yourself. Who's the poor one now? <laughs> After the incident, I ended up blocking Georgia and she now has nobody to contact. She lost her house and is homeless now, so she came to our shop to ask for help. But she got arrested by the police and her picture was uploaded on social media and she's facing backlashes. It'll take time for her to return to society, but it doesn't matter to me anymore. On the other hand, our shop was so successful that we were able to open store number two. Mike's mom ranked in the most successful people in the business and is on newspapers and magazines now. I want to know how George is feeling right now. <laughs> Yara, you're so cocky lately. Who, me? What are you talking about, Danielle? You brag about being rich. What the fuck? Um, I don't know what you're talking about, but aren't you the one that's bragging about being rich? Because I am rich. I see. Are you making fun of me or something? No, I'm not. I was just wondering what you meant by me being cocky and bragging about stuff. You were bragging that you went to the French restaurant close to the train station. I did go, but never bragged about it. Yes, you did. I'm the only one that can go there, not you. It doesn't matter to you. Can you stop complaining every minute? Are you trying to pick a fight with me? So it looks like you were grabbing coffee with one of your mom friends without my permission, right? Why do I need your permission? This is what I mean by being cocky. I'm the superior one here, so you all need my permission to do things, okay? Capiche? Um, absolutely not. I will go to wherever, whenever I want to go. Wow, you are such a bitch. Do you know the difference between you and I? I never compare myself to someone else, so I really don't care about that. You should watch your attitude because you'll probably regret it. Say that as many times as you want, but I'll go wherever I want to go without your permission, so please leave me alone. A few days later. See what happens when a poor, low-class person tries to go into my restaurant? Are you serious? It's my daughter's birthday! I didn't expect for a crazy-ass bitch to attack me! Something is seriously wrong with you! Why do you hate me so much? All I did was stop you from going to my expensive sushi restaurant because you don't belong there. You only went there a few times. It's not yours. Also, did you say stop me from going? I was carried to the hospital and ended up with three stitches on my forehead. What? Three stitches? Yes, I have to spend time in the hospital on the day of my daughter's special day. How can you do this? My parents and my husband's parents are here too. 
You deserved it because you decided to use my restaurant to celebrate her birthday. Are you listening to me? Do you think that it's okay to attack someone with stupid reasons? Oh my god, you just got three stitches. Deal with it. I actually thought that poor people could tolerate pain, but I guess not. I think I was too strong. <laughs> yes, because I got punched by a person who looks like a hippo. Excuse me? You should watch your mouth. I want to say the exact same thing back to you. By the way, are you not going to apologize about this? Why would a celeb apologize to someone like you? Okay, then. You piss me off by going to my restaurant, so of course I will do something. I can ruin your life. Let me see you do it. I really didn't want to do this because you're my daughter's friend's mother, but I'm tired of your disgusting attitude. Can you even do anything? <laughs> my husband has the power to cover up anything that you do, you know. Let's see about that. Get ready for the storm to come. A few days later. Hey, Kiara. Can we talk about this once? About what? I don't need to talk to you about anything. Did I do something that pissed you off? Because something terrible is going on. Yes, you did. So I hired an extremely strong lawyer to get revenge. I told you there's a storm coming. Ugh! I thought that my husband could cover this up, but it seems like this incident is going to be in the newspaper. He even said that I caused a serious injury against you, and he is mad at me, and I don't know why. You seriously don't know? Are you stupid? Anyways, I did hire a very good lawyer because your husband can't cover this up, right? This can't be real. Am I going to get arrested? Of course. You assaulted me. Wait, are you exaggerating? I didn't do anything that bad. Um, you attacked me, which caused me to fall down the stairs and get three stitches. Attacking? It was just an argument between mom friends. Even though you say that, I don't think that it's something forgivable. Wait, is this real or am I dreaming? It's real. Why do I need to joke about this with you? I'm getting ready to sue you, and if you disapprove of this, you might need to go to court. Hold on. Can I talk about this with you once? Because what the hell did I do? My elbow just hit your head. If we say that we are friends, I won't be a criminal, so can you think about that? What are you talking about? We are not friends. We never were from the beginning. I mean, we were mum friends, but not anymore. Our kids went to the same nursery and we just knew each other. Please don't say that. My husband is pissed at me and he might divorce me. Well, it's your responsibility. You've done something terrible to your husband's face. Maybe he'd be better off without you. Are you telling me to divorce him? Are you threatening me? Do you want money or something? Money? You probably don't know this, but I run a company. What? You were making fun of my husband for being a full-time office worker, but I have more money, so I'm not poor like you think. No one knew because I never bragged like you. You know what? Texting makes this thing such a big deal. It is a big deal. Why don't you understand that? You'll quickly be prosecuted and the public will know your face, so you might face consequences. I didn't mean for this to happen. I was just going to punish you, but I didn't expect it to be like this. Do you want an apology? I'm sorry. There, I said it. I don't think you're truly sorry, but even though you are, nothing will change. Anyways, I'll get whatever I can from you. You chose the wrong person to mess with. Bye, Danielle. Is your celeb life over? <laughs> After the incident. Danielle got sued and arrested. And this got on the newspaper with her face shown. She became known as the crazy-ass psychotic wife. And her husband ended up divorcing her and moved out of the house with the kids. So she has nowhere to go now. All of the mum friends she looked down on are now looking down on her. But her actions resulted in this, so it's her fault. But I bet she still doesn't think she's wrong.
Hi, is this Veronica Ford? Yes, who is this? It's Leo from Triple O Co. Limited. I'm contacting you for the final interview. Oh, hi Leo, thank you for contacting me. Are you ready for the final interview? Nervous, right? Yes, I am, <laughs> but I will do my best. You don't need to be that nervous, because I'm pretty sure you'll get the job. Oh, thank you, Leo. I'll be praying for you tomorrow, because I want you to get the job. Please, come to the same office as last time at 1 p.m. tomorrow, okay? The executive director and I will be doing the interview, but I wish it was only me. <laughs> what do you mean? If I did the interview myself, I would definitely accept you. But if the executive director is there also, I can't talk to you about some personal stuff. I'm aware that talking about personal stuff is inappropriate for an interview, so I'll be happy to talk about it after I get in. I really like that about you. I'm actually single now, so... Uh... Um, okay? I could tell you about our bank secretly, so can you think about me? Uh, no, thank you. Um, you're creeping me out a little. You're still a college student, so isn't it better for you to learn things? I can teach you. See you at the interview tomorrow, Leo. I need to prepare things for tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Veronica. Your final interview is tomorrow, right? I know you're nervous, but good luck. Thanks, Mom. Thanks for your support, but I don't know. I might get offered, but the person who's going to interview me tomorrow is kind of creepy. Oh? What kind of person is he? It's hard to explain. Maybe I'm just young and not used to a person like him. Let me know if there's anything, okay? I'll check on him. You don't need to do that, because I'll get the job if I say your name, so I'll deal with it by myself. Oh, that's true. Sorry about that. I mean, if you are okay with it, then that's that, but if something happens, then please let me know. I will do something about it. You're scaring me. Anyways, don't worry about it. Since you're my only daughter, please let me help you. Do you understand my feelings? Of course I do, Mom. Anyways, good luck tomorrow. Let me know when you're done, okay? Okay, thanks for the chat. The next day. Can't believe that a person who was raised poorly and by a single mom came here. Excuse me? There's a limit to what you can say and not say. I'm so surprised that an idiot like you made it to the final interview. Wow, you're so rude. You decided to not give me the job as soon as you knew that I was raised by a single mom? What's wrong with that? People who are raised by single parents are not going to get the job. It's simple as that. Is this like your company's rule or something? It's common sense. You're such an ass to discriminate against someone based on how they were raised. You can say that as much as you want about it, but it's a waste because you didn't get the job. I was going to give you the job because of your looks, but you have no common sense and you were raised poorly. You're not worthy to be my wife. What? Wife? All I did was go to the interview. Are you serious? People like you will only get jobs with looks, because I don't think you have the brains. You think it's okay to discriminate people based on how they were raised. Is your company okay? Actually, are you okay, Leo? Well, our bank is big, so stupid people like you will not get the job. If you underestimate me, then don't ever come back again. I didn't expect for you to say these kinds of things. You shouldn't make fun of me, you know. Why? <laughs> I think you're the one that was raised poorly. Look at the way you talk. Yeah, yeah, whatever. My mom wants to talk to you. What? You're involving your mom with this? <laughs> How pathetic. We're not in kindergarten. My mom's name is Valentina Ford. Does this name ring a bell? I think she's your bank's major shareholder, right? Major shareholder? Wait, hold on. That Valentina Ford? She's your mom? Yes, I told my mom everything you said to me, so you and the bank are in danger right now. Wait, are you joking? Nope. 
My mom said that she will not use your bank anymore. You're screwed. Wait, can we do the final interview again? I'll take it all back. Nope. I wonder what will happen to you. <laughs> A few days later. I am so sorry for making you upset by saying unnecessary things. Do you think you can come to the company so I can talk to you about this? No, why would I go? You wanted to work at this bank, right? I truly apologize for what I said to you. So can you give me one more chance? Let me guess. You're suddenly nice to me because you're facing problems, right? Yes, I'm in big trouble now. Actually, the bank is. Your mom sold a large number of shares, so we're in big trouble. I will offer you the job, so can you come back? Absolutely not. I actually found another job, so you guys don't matter to me anymore. Bye! Wait, please. If I knew you were Mrs. Ford's daughter, I... I wouldn't have acted like that. All I did was tell my mom the truth, and she did what she had to do. This happened because you came to the bank for an interview in the first place. Maybe your attitude is the problem. Also, I have questions about the weird chat you've been sending me. I wanted to help you! Help me with what? Everything you said to me was unacceptable and I will not forgive you. I told you I didn't mean to say those things. I'm held responsible for the bank loss, so I'm screwed. What should I do? Well, everything is your fault, so why don't you take responsibility? Okay, I will let you be my girlfriend, so can you do something about this? Sounds good. Tell your mom that you will marry me or something so, so she can use our bank again. That's the only way I will be fine. You are also able to marry an elite banker, so it doesn't sound bad, right? You're a piece of sh**. I already have a boyfriend, so I don't need an old guy like you. Stop looking down on people and start your life over or something. <laughs> After the incident. Leo was heartbroken by me and he got disciplinary dismissal for causing a loss of hundreds of millions and also had to pay compensation for damage. This is all because of what he said to me. He got despaired by this, but everything is his fault. His life really sucks now because he got fired and is in debt right now. He should have thought a little more before he opened his mouth. You'll attend Rachel's wedding, right? Make sure that you wear a lot of makeup and buy yourself a nice dress. Otherwise, you'll stand out among the other beautiful guests. You need to try to cover up your ugliness. Please don't embarrass our family. I do plan on going to Rachel's wedding. Do you have a problem with my usual makeup? I'm a little surprised. Because most people look nice when they wear makeup. The makeup isn't doing anything for you. And why are you so confident about your looks? If I had your face, I'd make more of an effort to look prettier. I can't change the way that I look, and you're being hurtful as always. I'm going to Rachel's wedding, so what is the problem here? I'm worried that you're going to embarrass us at the wedding, that's all. I'm married to Sean, but that doesn't mean that I get along with you. You're not related, so you don't have to tell anyone at Rachel's wedding that we're family. Shouldn't you make more of an effort to get along with me? I've tried. You just don't want to let me in or accept me for who I am. You just need to promise me that you won't do anything to embarrass me or Rachel at her wedding. I'm going to avoid you at the wedding so that people don't know we're family. You should do the same. Fine, but I just think that you're being really rude. You only care about your own feelings. I don't know how Sean's been putting up with you this whole life. Shut up. If you make any more rude comments to me, I'm going to get Sean to divorce you. I don't think that Sean would agree to that. Sean's an adult. He's not going to take your advice on what to do with his marriage. Besides, he's happy being married to me. I mean, if he were the type of person to get his own mother to make important life decisions for him, I wouldn't want to stay married to him. Well, if you make fools out of us, I'm going to suggest to Sean that he divorce you. I'm sure 
that if I told him the reasons why I wanted him to leave you, he'd choose me over you. To be honest, we all want you to get divorced. Okay, okay, you told me this so many times. You have nothing to worry about. I won't do anything to embarrass you at Rachel's wedding. I assure you of that. Even if you don't do anything, your presence in of itself is an embarrassment to this family. Well, I can't do anything about that then. I'm busy, so I'm going to go now. Well, you can pick me up tomorrow. Why would you need me to do that? Isn't it your wedding day? It is, but I'm out drinking with friends now, and I don't think that I'll be able to wake up early and take myself to the venue. You're coming to the wedding anyway, so it won't be a problem for you, right? I am, but I need time in the morning to get ready for your reception. I also have an appointment at the hairdresser to get my hair done. Nobody is going to care about how you look. Don't you think that it's more important for the bride to arrive at the venue on time? You're rude, just like your mother. Can't you ask your parents or your fiancé instead? They aren't able to pick me up, which is why I'm asking you to do it. Besides, I don't want my family to know that I'm out drinking the night before my wedding. I'm the bride. You need to listen to me. It's my big day. Okay, fine, if you insist. Where should I meet you tomorrow morning, then? Come pick me up at my parents' place. I'm supposed to spend the night there tonight. Well, if you're staying with your parents, can't you head to the wedding venue with them, then? Actually, my parents are staying at a hotel tonight, close to the wedding venue. Then why don't you stay at the hotel with them? Wouldn't that be more practical? Everyone thinks that I'll be staying at the hotel too, but I have my reasons for not going there. So can you take me to the hotel tomorrow morning instead of directly to the wedding venue? I don't understand the situation. Rachel, what's going on? Tonight is my bachelorette party, and I want to party hard before getting married. And I don't want my parents to get in the way of that. You understand that, right? I think that I see what you're doing here. You're making everyone stay at a hotel so you can do whatever you want on your last night being single. And you're going to pretend that you stayed at a hotel and go to the wedding with the rest of your family, right? That's right. You have your own car, so why can't you drive to the hotel yourself? I told my parents that I'd go to the hotel by train, so they'd get suspicious if I took the car. I see, then why don't you take a taxi? Ugh. A taxi is going to be expensive. It'll be much cheaper if you came and picked me up. Thanks, and see you tomorrow. So you're giving me no choice in the matter, then? Yes. Please come pick me up at 7 a.m. because I'm supposed to have breakfast with my family at 8 at the hotel. That's pretty early, but fine. I'm only doing you this one favor because it's your wedding day. I'm never going to do something like this for you ever again. Where are you? I heard that you were in a car accident. Yes, that's right. I'm in the hospital right now. So it's true then. You got into an accident. I did, and I'm injured pretty badly. How can you do this to us? What do you mean? Are you saying that I purposely got myself into an accident? You're still going to make it to the wedding though, right? What? It's Rachel's wedding today. You can't not be there. What will people think? The accident wasn't my fault. Another car crashed into me and just ran from the scene. I'm in a lot of pain right now. There's no way that I'll be able to attend the wedding in my condition. You can't cancel on us at the last minute. We need you at the wedding. But you told me before that you didn't want to see my ugly face at the wedding. I don't think that anyone will miss seeing me today. You just want to embarrass our entire family. You're so selfish. If you're not coming to this wedding, I won't consider you a part of the family anymore. You're not really making any sense to me right now, but whatever. 
Are you going to force me to go to the wedding with my injuries? I can't even walk without crutches right now. Well, you could still limp. You're unbelievable. I would say this is abuse. If you don't want Sean to divorce you, I suggest you come to this wedding. Why do I have to be punished with divorce just because I can't make it to one wedding? It's important for our family. Rachel is getting married, and as my son's wife, you should be there. How can you threaten someone who's just been in a car accident? Don't you have any compassion? You're a terrible person. I have broken bones and I'm not well. So what? Who cares about a few broken bones? Today is Rachel's big day. I am not going to let you miss that. I don't want to hear any excuses from you. You need to come to the wedding. Fine, I'll come to the wedding since it seems that I have no choice in the matter. I'm going to punch you in the face if you're late. See, I understand. The wedding starts in an hour. Hurry up. I'm on my way, but I'm not responsible for what happens next. What is your problem? I'm furious. How dare you? How is this my fault? I went to the wedding like you asked me to. What is the problem? You said that if I didn't come to the wedding, you'd make Sean divorce me. I didn't think that you'd actually come to the wedding limping and all bloody. The other wedding guests were in shock. Yeah, I saw that. When they found out that Rachel was the one that crashed into my car and ran away from the scene. I'm sure that they can't stop talking about it. Are you shocked too? Of course I am. And you didn't have to tell everyone what Rachel did. How could you do this to us? Everyone was asking me about what happened to me, so I just told everyone the truth. I didn't do anything wrong. Would have been wrong of me to lie. Rachel's the one who committed the crime here. She should be arrested. How can you try to blame this on me? I had no idea that Rachel did that to you. That's why I wanted you to come to the wedding. Had I known, I would have never asked you to come. Well, it was Rachel's responsibility to tell you what happened. And as her mother, you're responsible too. Rachel was the one that asked me to pick her up by car at your house this morning. I parked my car in front of your house and was waiting when Rachel crashed into my car. I don't know whose car it was, but Rachel was speeding. She was driving under the influence and broke my bones. I should have never married into this family. You give me nothing but bad luck. I know that you're making this all up. Rachel was staying at the hotel with us last night. She couldn't have been out drinking. How can you be so sure that she stayed at the hotel? You didn't see her until breakfast this morning. And Rachel's fiancé told me that he hadn't seen her last night at the hotel. I went to your house to pick up Rachel because she asked me to. She basically gave me no choice. I can show you her text messages if you don't believe me. She told me that since it was her last night being single, she wanted to party with her friends. She drank too much and stayed out until the morning, which is why she rushed home in her car. So it really was Rachel that hit you then? She caused a hit and run? But did you have to air our dirty laundry to all our wedding guests? Was that really necessary? You forced me to come to the wedding. People were going to ask me questions. I had no choice. I didn't want to attend the wedding. I should have stayed at the hospital to rest and recover. I went because you wanted me to. Why aren't you more grateful? Why do I have to be grateful? As Sean's wife, you're obligated to attend big family events. We had to cancel the wedding midway because of all the chaos that you caused. I'm angry, if anything. You ruined Rachel's wedding. It was the groom that asked to cancel the wedding. It had nothing to do with me. The person you should be blaming is your daughter, Rachel. I'm the victim here. I think that you and Rachel owe me an apology at the very least. I'm never going to forgive you for any of this. I want you to divorce Sean. I never considered you family and we're officially breaking up with you. I don't care because I feel the same. I agree that it's best for me to break up with your family. What the hell? Sean is in complete agreement with me. We're cutting all ties with you. What are you saying? 
I'm talking about you divorcing Sean. At first, Sean didn't know what was going on, but when I explained everything to him, he's livid with the way that you and the rest of the family have been treating me. He's the only responsible one in your family. What Rachel did to me is a crime, and instead of worrying about the fact that your daughter is now a criminal, you're trying to blame the whole thing on me. Sean and I are making the right choice in cutting all ties with you. But Sean is my son. You can't let him make the mistake of cutting ties with his own family. You're being selfish. I think that you and Rachel are the selfish ones here. The police are on their way now, and they're going to arrest Rachel. And her fiancé was wise for canceling the wedding. I'm sure that he's not going to marry Rachel after this. Who's going to pay the cancellation fees? The groom has already returned all the wedding gifts and congratulatory gifts of money. It's not the groom's fault. No one wants to marry a criminal. I think it makes sense for your family to pay the cancellation fees. It was lucky for him that he and Rachel weren't legally married yet. How can you say that? Don't you feel sorry for Rachel? You're a part of this family. I've never considered you family, and after what Rachel did to me, I'm cutting you out of my life. I mean, you're the one that told me that I didn't belong in this family in the first place. You wanted to kick me out from the day that Sean and I got married. So can you stop saying that we're family only when it serves you a purpose? I've had enough of your bullshit. Sean and I want nothing to do with this family anymore. As for your husband, he found out about the way that you've been mistreating me all this time and he's not happy about it. Don't bring my husband into this. Don't mess with my family any more than you already have. I don't need to do anything. Your husband and the rest of your family were at the wedding and they know what Rachel did to me. It's up to him with what he wants to do now and he knows everything. Melanie, I think you need to calm down. I think that we should sit down face to face and have a talk. There isn't anything that I'd like to discuss with you. I don't want anything to do with you. You failed as a mother and you need to take some responsibility for what Rachel did. And Rachel needs to pay for what she did to me. Goodbye now. It was nice knowing you. You said that I was an embarrassment to the family, but look how your real daughter turned out. <coughs> Helen was horrified and embarrassed because in the end, Rachel was arrested and news about the arrest and cancellation of the wedding spread fast. Because she was so oblivious to what was going on around her, she ended up ruining her life. The rest of her family and relatives cut her off completely and she was forced to live the life of a recluse. Her husband divorced her as well. At first, Helen tried to rely on her son Sean and his wife Melanie. But for obvious reasons, they completely shut her out. She has nowhere to go now and no family to depend on and we can only imagine that a life of despair awaits Helen. She did this to herself, if only she had been shrewd about her decisions. But it's too late to regret it now because the damage has already been done.